Flight 209er, you are cleared for takeoff. Roger. Huh? LA departure frequency 123.9er. Roger. Huh? Request vector. Over. What? Flight 209er, clear for vector 324. We have clearance, Clarence. Roger, Roger. What's our vector, Victor? Tower radio clearance. Over. That's Clarence. Over. Over. Roger. Huh? Roger. Over. What? Huh? Who? What's your vector, Victor? Vectors in the plane. When we say vectors in the plane, we simply mean vectors in the x, y axis, the coordinate plane, all right? So let's get right into it. Vectors in the plane. What is a vector? All right, a vector, I want you to think about a vector as a shift, okay? Um, it's, it's something that has quantity, uh, has both direction and magnitude, okay? So we're going to represent it by an arrow, arrow. Suppose there's an earthquake in a town, okay, and there's a building. Let's call it building A, all right? Uh, and let's say, um, you know, that there's this earthquake shifts the entire town. Let's say it shifts it, you know, three feet to the east and shifts it, oh, I don't know, two feet to the north, okay? So it's, it's got a kind of a horizontal component, we would say, and a vertical component. Um, this vector, represented here by AB, the arrow from A to B, represents the shift that every single point in the plane made. Uh, okay, so every point in the city made. So building, a building at point A would be shifted three feet to the east and two feet to the north. It has both magnitude and direction. Um, when I say magnitude, I mean that's the length of the vector, would be the magnitude of the vector. We'll talk about the vocab more in a little bit. Um, but we're going to represent it by an arrow, and what's important is that this vector can be moved anywhere. Okay, right? Because, you know, this is true for building A. This is also true for, you know, uh, you know building D over here. Building D also got shifted the same um, direction the same magnitude. So the vector is the representation of that movement. Okay, so as long as the vectors have the same magnitude and direction, they can be shifted and put anywhere. Okay, so let's get into the vocab. Okay, what is the vector? All right, so I'm going to kind of, you might want to pause here and copy some of this stuff down, but what is the vector of the vocab? Here we go. The initial point is the starting point of the vector. So if I had vector, you know, vector A, and it went over to point B, you know, or building A moved it to position B, we would say that A was the initial point, the starting point. The terminal point is just the ending point. Where does the vector end? The magnitude is how long the vector is. What is this length from A to B? Excuse me. When we name vectors, we typically use bold-faced lowercase letters, okay? So we're going to use, like, you know, a, a bolded U or a bolded V. It's a little bit... Um, equivalent vectors are vectors that have the same magnitude and direction. So let's say that, you know, instead of naming this, you know, A, B, which we could, uh, but let's name this vector U here. Okay. Um, if we wanted to, uh, you know, find the equivalent vector, we would find a vector, maybe W, that had the same length and direction. Okay. So U and W, we would say, are equivalent vectors, and then we would write it like this. U equals w okay so those we, we say if u equals w they're equivalent vectors they have the same magnitude and the same direction okay write vector pq in component form and find its magnitude all right well suppose we had um, a vector that went from point p up to point q right in this direction okay um, and I wanted to write it in component form. Remember we said that, you know, if we're thinking about the earthquake, it's going to be shifted horizontally and shifted vertically. Okay, so we're, in other words, it's got two components. It's got the horizontal component. What does it move from left to right? It's got the vertical component. What does it move up and down? Um, so, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, I want to figure out what those components are, and then we can write this vector in component form. In fact, let's say, let's call this vector u, okay? Um, so it's kind of a bold-faced u, we'll say it's the, the vector from p to q. All right, well, what is the component, the horizontal component of this vector? Well, basically, we would say this distance is the x values subtracted, right? This is 5 minus 4, excuse me, 5 minus 1, which is 4. 
Okay? So vector u, we could represent, and now I'm going to introduce a little notation here. We use kind of a sideways, um, a sideways uh, v here. It kind of looks like a brace, but uh, to represent... Uh, to represent the vector. So the first component, the horizontal component, we write first, that would be 4. And then the vertical component, it's positive 4, right, moves to the right 4 units. And the vertical component would just be 4 minus 2, right, the y um, coordinate subtracted, which is just 2. So this is in component 4, we would say u is 4 comma 2. And U represents a shift of four units to the right and two units up. Okay, that's how we write it in component form. A um, couple things that are uh, important. Oh, uh, sorry, we've got to go find its magnitude. Remember, magnitude is length. Okay, so what we're really looking for is the length of vector U. We represent magnitude by a uh, double bar. Okay, so we, we would say, hey, if we want the magnitude of U, we would write, let's do this in a different color, we would write a solid bar the vector, and then another solid bar. That means the magnitude of u. Okay, so this is read as magnitude of u. Okay, so the magnitude of u, well, isn't that just the distance from point p to q? So I think we could use the distance formula, which is the square root of x2 minus x1. Okay, well, that's the square root of, let's see, 5 minus 1. squared, plus uh, the y-coordinate subtracted, so 4 minus 2 squared, okay, and I think that's going to equal, let's see, 4 squared is 16, plus 2 squared is 4, that's going to be the square root of 20, okay, so the magnitude of that thing is the square root of 20, all right, um, when we write a vector in component form, I'm going to erase this here, um, when we write it in component form, this little thing down here says, at the bottom says, every vector can be written with the initial point at the origin. So this vector was PQ, is at 1, 2, and 5, 4, but we could have easily written it, sorry, I'll kind of try and um, you know, find a good spot to write here, but we could have easily written it at the, starting at the origin, right? And how would we do that? Well, here is vector PQ. But I know the components are to the right 4 and up 2. So if I started at the origin, I'm just going to go over 1, 2, 3, 4, and I'm going to go up 2 units. So up over 4 and up 2. And there is my vector u written at the origin. So that's what I mean. This vector is a shift. It can be kind of put anywhere you'd like it to be. Uh, other way. Okay. So over 3 and up 1 unit. Okay. This is vector v. Suppose then that we wanted to find the components of the scalar. When we say scalar, we're just talking about a number multiplied by the vector. Okay, three times v. What that means is we're going to take that. Say that earthquake. You know, an earthquake happens. Um, you know, in one town and it moves at vector v. Everything is moved, kind of shifted by three units and one unit. Um, but in the town over, the earthquake was worse for whatever reason. Everything got shifted three times as far. Okay, so we would take vector v, and we're talking about extending that three times. And I really wrote this in a good place here. Um, in fact, I'm going to just very quickly redraw this here. I'm taking vector v and extending it three times as far. Okay, so this one started off at, you know, 3, 1. Okay, and then it moved over... 3 and up 1 again, as I'm kind of stretching it, that's 2 times, and then over 3 units and up 1 again. So if this one uh, was at, it's kind of started at 3, 1 here, this is going to be over 9 and up 3 units. So this whole vector, we would say, we would call this vector 3v, right, because this was v, that vector was 3v, we would say, hey, the components of 3v... are over 9 units, right, because we went over 9 if we count the total units that we went over, and up 3 units. So that would be my resultant vector of 3 um, times vector v. I've kind of stretched it 
Um, so it's three times as long. The magnitude, so basically what we've done here is we said, hey, V is 3, 1. Notice that all we have to do for scalar multiplication is multiply the components. So we multiplied 3 by 1. Okay, so we multiplied 3 by 1. Excuse me, multiplied 3 by 3, multiplied 1 by 3, and that gave us these coordinates right here. All right, so that's scalar multiplication. The same. We can also add and subtract vectors. So suppose that there's, you know, we we'll stick to that earthquake example. Suppose that there is a um, an earthquake that happens and shifts everything vector u, which is. negative five units, right, backwards five units, and then up two units. Once again, that's a terrible place to start. Let's suppose that it goes backwards five units, and then up two units. Okay, so this is negative five, two, and this is vector u. Okay, and then there's another earthquake that shifts everything by vector v, which is three units to the right and up one. So that's going to be shifted three units to the right and then up one unit right there. The vector, and that's vector v, okay, um, the vector that is created by those two vectors, if we're thinking about it geometrically, is the vector u plus v. So this one in red here is the vector u plus v. V. Okay. So to figure out, um, you know, where is u plus v? What is the actual? Um, what is that vector? We just add the components. So u plus v equals the components negative three, excuse me, negative five plus three, comma two plus one. Okay. So u plus v is actually negative two. Um, the three. Okay, so we would say in that earthquake, everything got shifted backwards five units, or to the left, or maybe west five units, and then up two units. And then it all got shifted again, you know, to the right three units and up one unit. Okay, and since it's uh, the net change of that shift is a shift of backwards two units, only kind of you know shifted back two units and up. Three units. That's the net change. Okay, so if we think about it geometrically and algebraically, algebraically we're just adding the components, right? Um, if we did u minus v, okay, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna go the same, the same way. Um, if you've already kind of got it, then you maybe don't need to watch this example. Um, but we start with u, which is, you know, negative five units, and up to is vector u, okay, and then we're gonna go. Then we're going to subtract vector v. Well, subtract, actually, this is really important. So if you've made it this far, keep watching. If you subtract vector v, that means we're taking v, but we're going in the opposite direction. So we're going back three units, and then we're going down one unit. Okay, so negative down, left three, and down one. Okay, and that's vector, that's negative v. Okay, so what we're really doing is we're moving by vector u, and then we're moving uh, back or the opposite direction, vector v. So we take v, we do the opposite of that, and we'll put those together. The resultant vector um, is vector u minus v. So this vector right here kind of looks like a horizontal line, but it's not, um, is u minus v. Okay. So if I want u minus v, I subtract the components. Okay. That is going to be negative 5 minus 3, and 2 minus 1, okay? So u minus v equals negative 8, 1. So if we think about that as net change, I think that kind of makes sense, right? First we shifted to the left 5 units, the first earthquake, then we shifted back even further, negative 3 units, so we to in total we changed back negative 8 units, and then we ended up moving just up 1 unit, right? We moved up two with the first earthquake, and then we actually move backwards one with the second earthquake. Okay? I hope the earthquake example um, helps you. I stole it from somebody, but I think it really represents what a vector is. It's, it's a shift of all points in the plane.